All right, let's talk the heavyweights. Obviously, look, the heavyweight division has changed quite a lot in the last 12 months. We no longer have Tyson Fury as a top dog. That guy is Alexander Usyk. Daniel Dubois is a world champion. So it has changed a lot and continue uh, will continue to change. Uh, let's talk about Alexander Usyk, who says he's open for an AJ trilogy. This is what he said in speaking to the Mel. He said, I don't particularly want any rematches, but when we beat Tyson Fury for the second time, and when Anthony Joshua beats Daniel Dubois, of course they would want to do a third fight. From my point of view, I have no right to deny AJ a third fight because he gave me two incredible fights. Anthony helped me because even Anthony helped me, sorry, become even more famous in the world. Interesting. He's already spoke about AJ beating Dubois, which is a, I think jumping the gun a little bit. But um, yeah, I mean, if if that scenario was to play out, that really is the only fight to go with, isn't it? Like, really and truly. It's only AJ versus Usyk. If those two scenarios played out exactly how Usyk spoke about them playing out. Well, a little eye dent here. I, th I think it's interesting that he didn't mention he could do a second fight with Daniel Dubois because out of the Joshua and the Dubois fights du with Usyk, um, arguably Dubois gave him a harder fight or a harder night, you know? Um, yeah, even though no, you're right. Yeah. yeah, he did. He looked very uncomfortable in that fight. Dubois, we, we, always, we always rely on outcomes and don't look back at the fight enough, in my view, certainly in, in casual terms of looking at boxing. Um, I think you were there ringside that night for Dubois and Usyk, weren't you? Um, no, not in Poland, no. No, no I, was there, I was there with TalkSport, and, and mm. um, I thought Dubois gave him a hard time. He's, he's launching a third fight with Anthony Joshua. He's playing with the mind of Tyson Fury, trying to draw him out and get him to have a reaction on social media. I'm glad to see that Tyson Fury's not reacting because he mm. shouldn't, doesn't need to. He's given his interview what he, what he thinks about the third fight. Let's not forget where they were in that fight after seven rounds. Muscle memory here. Fury was very much on top. Um, that's what Fury's got to do the second time. I do still, I've got to say now, I see Usyk as a marginal favourite in the second fight, but don't write Tyson Fury off in the second fight either. I think most of us would like to see Fury win that fight because then we get the AJ fight. Anthony Joshua has been talking about the fight with Tyson Fury as well. He doesn't want to lose it because he doesn't want to lose the Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fights in his career if Fury loses to Usyk. There's an awful lot to play out in this last, like you're saying, this last third third of the year, when we come into September, it's, it's a really interesting time for the heavyweight division. Interesting in a different way from a year ago. Yeah. I almost feel like Alexander Usyk's trying to um, find opponents for himself. I think even he knows if he were to beat Tyson Fury, that there isn't much, there'd always be a fight he can have, but there isn't much out there for him. Um, I don't think that, Look, if Dubois beats AJ, I think people will want to see Dubois Usyk again. Why not? If Dubois can convincingly knock out AJ. He's got a right to it. Yeah, of course, right. But the money fight would be AJ. And he knows that. Financially, he knows the check's a bit different when the opposing name says AJ. And he's probably seen what these checks look like in the last couple of years. So it, it makes sense. Um, do you think the crowd would be interested at all with, with an Usyk AJ third fight? Do you think they'd be Totally. Excited? Totally. I am. I think yeah. people would be. He came closer the second time. After nine rounds, I don't care anyone says, I had it 5-4-2 to, to Joshua in the second fight. He did so much better in the second fight. If Joshua looks tremendous and he splunders Dubois and, and, and goes out there and is really <laughs> aggressive, if he splunders him, if he splashes him with, <laughs> with, with punches, um, and it is going to be a, a, a fight of... It could, it's a high-stakes duel, frankly. Mate, that is a shootout. It is a shoot. It is a shootout in lots of ways. Yeah, yeah. If he destroys Dubois, yes, please, I would see that. I mean, I'd rather see him against Fury, but mm. and it's a much closer fight now. Um, Fury's probably only got two fights left. Usyk's probably only got two fights left. Joshua's probably got three. You know, and the the, the way the algorithm of the of the, the era could change if Fury beats Usyk, then let's say. AJ beat Fury or Fury beat AJ, it changes that again. It throws to wanting another fight then. How much is enough? That's what we'll be looking at in the end. And they're probably all thinking at the moment, how much is enough? Yeah. Down yeah. To how long yeah. do I go on 
how much money can I earn, that whole algorithm. But look at the fantasy fights we can now look at, which we know will and can and will probably happen. We couldn't do that a year ago, Eddie. No. Uh, talking of fantasy, for me, look, we, we've had, obviously, look, we, we've been lucky enough to be involved in Riyadh season in Riyadh. And now we've obviously had Riyadh season international at the BMO Stadium, and we've got one coming up, Wembley Stadium. I saw the reception Martin Bacoli got going back to uh, Congo. Amazing. And I'm like, it was incredible. And I'm thinking, we need a Riyadh season Africa desperately. And it won't cost the extremes of an LA or a Wembley. It would cost a fraction of that. And we've got a heavyweight now in Martin Bacoli that would fill a nice stadium over there. Joshua Bacoli. Bacoli. Oh my god. Chaos Lord. in Lagos. Chaos oh, in Lagos. Chaos in Lagos, baby. Chaos in Lagos. It's true though, Jer like Gareth, that we do need a big African event. Who are you about to call me then? Gareth. No, just Gareth. No, I just Gareth. Okay, I thought you were gonna go down another road then. Um no, <laughs> I, I think th those scenes We've got the fighter for it now. We've actually got Absolutely. the those scenes the remind me Bacoli. of when we were kids, Eddie. It, but when he's driving down the street in the in the car and they're, they're lined with people. How fantastic that the Congolese want support Bacoli. I think it's amazing. Um, yeah. you know, and um it's a country with heavyweight history. So this so there it. we go. Yeah. And, and and it's really nice at this time that that also that Francis Ngannou is about to make his comeback, I think, uh, in mm. PFL against uh, Henan Ferreira. And and Francis Ngannou has signed a deal now with the PFL that he's going to be there. I think it's CEO for African MMA. Um, it is. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's happening. We talked. You and I have talked about this for a few years. We've had that influx in mixed martial arts from the from Eastern Europe. It's time for Africa to rise in that way. In in it's not like we've always had great African fighters. Many of our Americans remember African Americans. Many of our British, black British fighters are descended from the Caribbean who are have originally come from African nations and tribes. So, you know, Africa rise, please now. You know, Africa yeah. rise. You know, it's time. It's time for um, sort of African organisations to support their athletes as well. Uh, yeah. One thing is, I know we've done an Olympics like show here or Olympics theme show. One thing a lot of the African Olympic, so the yeah the African Olympic athletes have complained about is not being backed by their countries. None of them are being backed, and they've actually taken to it. Some of them have won medals, and the first thing they said is, "I weren't backed. I had to go to America and get funding. I'm only wearing the jersey because it's where I'm from, but I've not been backed at all." So they don't want these African countries to take the to take the plaudits because they've done nothing to support them. So. Um, yeah, it might mean a case of, unfortunately, Africa rising, but with the help of a Turkey or someone else to help it rise, because not? I don't think Africa is going to do it itself. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I agree. And, and and finally on that, you know, um, I remember years ago arguing with Matthew Pinson at the Paralympic Games about rowing. I think there's only 19 nations that have won rowing medals because I was actually having a proper row with him at wow. the time. Um, it was, but it was, well, there were, there were blind um, or assisted runners in the sprints, and there were only four or five in a final, maybe mm. four. And he'd said, you know, if they want to be seen on the same level as the Olympics, we need greater depth. And I said, well, hang on a minute. You won gold medals. You won medals in rowing. Only 19 nations have ever won medals in it. You look at all the African countries that don't have rowing pieces or don't have yeah. Olympic swimming pools. Well, that's the only reason. It's got nothing to do with genetics or bone structure. Or It's because there isn't the infrastructure for those people to rise. So I know we're making this pan sports today. That's all it is. Opportunity and recognition. End of. Well said. Well said, Mr. Gareth A. Davis.